The app router in Next.js made routing more simple in some regards, but also more complicated by some of the new features that it added. And one of those new, more complicated features is parallel routing. Now, this is an incredibly important feature for you to understand to really take your applications to the next level because it allows you to add extra performance by doing parallel streaming. It also allows you to really easily render things dynamically or conditionally, which is great for something like authentication. So if you're unfamiliar with parallel routing, it's definitely something you're going to want to learn if you want to master Next.js. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream projects sooner. And if you want to really take your Next.js skills to the next level, I highly recommend checking out my complete Next.js course. It's going to be linked down below. It's part of my React.js course. So just check out the link down below. It's going to be the premium package of my React.js course that includes the entire Next.js course. Now in this video, I'm going to be talking about parallel routing. And I first want to talk about how it actually solves particular problems. For example, right now, let's say that I have this dashboard page, which has just a nav at the top inside of my layout. I'm rendering out my child page, which just is a really simple H2 that says dashboard. And then I'm also rendering out a user section and an article section. And each of these sections has their own delay. As you can see, the users is a three second delay, articles is five seconds, and then my dashboard is two seconds. So when I refresh my page, you see I get these three different loading states showing up. The first loading state for my dashboard is my loading.tsx file while for my users and my articles, it's using the suspense boundary to load my information. And this works perfectly fine. I'm able to load all these routes in parallel, which means after two seconds, this one loads, then three seconds, this one, and finally after five seconds, my articles loads. Now for really simple pages, this is probably going to be fine, but as your pages get more complex and you want to parallel stream multiple different complex things to your page, there's going to be a much better way to do that. And that's with parallel routing. So instead of having these components directly inside my layout, I can actually extract them out into their own folders and they can work just like a normal page where I have my own loading state, my own page, my own error state, and so on. So I get all the power of having this route as its own page while keeping it embedded into a different page. To do that, all you need to do is inside of the folder that you're currently in, so in my case, dashboard, create a brand new folder and you start this folder with the at symbol. This allows you to say that you want to have parallel routes you render. So in my case, I'm gonna have an at users route and inside of here, I'm going to create a page.tsx. And all this page.tsx is going to do is just take this user's component and bring it directly into here. And we'll export that as our default function, just like that. And I'll call this my users page. There we go. And I'll make sure I'll get that wait function imported as well. Then what I want to do is I want to go into my layout and do the exact same thing for my articles section. So I'm just going to copy this down. I'm going to call this at articles. And inside articles, I'm just going to change my wait to five seconds. And this will say articles, and this will be my articles page. So now I've essentially created two different parallel groups that I've created. I have my articles group and my users group, and then I have my normal page group as well. So inside my layout, instead of importing these components like this, I can remove all of that, remove this, remove this weight entirely and all this suspense related code. And instead what I can do is where I'm getting my children being passed in, every single at group that you have is also going to be passed in. So I have an at articles and I have an at users. And you'll even see I get autocomplete from TypeScript because Next.js is smart enough to look at these folders and know that they are actually there. So then what I can do is I can add in my articles. I can type that as a React node and my users, and I can type that as a React node as well. Give that a quick save. And all I need to do is just render out those sections. So users, articles, just like that. And now if I add in a loading state for these, I'll actually be able to get that loading. And the great thing about this is I can just create a new file called loading dot tsx export a default function we'll call this loading users and in here i'll just return an h2 that says loading users and i'll do the exact same thing for my articles i'll just copy this file over and just change users to articles there we go so now if i give all these pages a quick save and i go to my layout you can see that my layout is drastically cleaned up but when i refresh my page over here you're noticing that i'm getting the exact same results that i had before but the really great thing about this compared to what I had before is everything is much more componentized because now I have this articles folder where everything related to my articles takes place. I can even add in here, for example, an error.tsx page, and I can add in my own error boundary. So this must be a client component and I'll just export default function error articles. There we go. And in here for now, I'm just going to return an H2 that says error, just to make it as simple as humanly possible. So now if for some reason, this actually throws an error. So let's just come in here, throw a new error on this page. 
and I give this a quick save and a refresh. After that five second delay, you're gonna notice it's going to throw an error and it's actually gonna show me the text error instead, which is super great. So again, it's super compartmentalized. I have everything related to articles inside of this one single folder, everything related to users in this one folder and everything related to my main dashboard section inside of this main folder here. So everything has its own place, which means that if your code is complicated, it's much easier to figure out what's going on in each section. But this isn't like super groundbreaking because technically I could have done all of this the other way with everything in my layout file and so on, and it wouldn't have been terrible, especially with simple code like this. What makes this really powerful though is how you can take this even another step further. Let's say for example, I only want to render the article section of my page some of the time. What I can do is inside of my layout, let's say I have a variable inside of here that just says const render articles. Let's set that equal to false. So I only want to render my articles sometimes. Well, I can just come in here if render articles is true, then I'll render out my articles. Otherwise, I'm just going to render out nothing. So we can just do this really, really simple like that. So I'm going to render out my articles if this variable is true, otherwise I won't. So when I do a refresh, you notice my article section is not rendered at all. While if this was true, and I do a refresh, you'll notice that my article section is being rendered. So this is a great way to conditionally render things, which is really useful, for example, with logging in users. Let's say, for example, that this dashboard is something that you must be logged in in order to access. Well, what I can do is I can just have a variable is logged in. You would get this from your database or something like that. And by default, let's set that to false. So here we're going to render out everything just like we normally would, but I'm going to wrap things in an is logged in. So if I am not logged in, so if I'm not logged in, instead of returning all of this information down here, let's say I'm going to bring in a login page instead. So I'm going to return login page, or we'll just call it login. And I'm actually going to create a new parallel route for that. So at login, just like that. Let's create a brand new page.tsx. Let's export default function login page. And this will just return an h2 that says login page, just like that. There we go. So now here I can actually get that login and I can make sure I type that as a React node. There we go. So now if I'm not logged in, I'm showing my login page. Otherwise, I'm showing this page down here. I can actually remove those brackets just like that. So now here, give this a quick refresh. And you'll notice right now it's not showing anything. That's because sometimes when you're dealing with parallel routes, you do need to actually restart your server. So let me just give my server a quick restart and then we'll refresh our page. And we should see we are being redirected to the login page whenever we're not logged in. But if my login is set to true, for example, I've logged in my user, you can now see it's rendering out all of the normal content on the page. So this is again, a really powerful use case for this particular parallel routing. Now, the next thing I wanna talk about with parallel routing is actually really cool, but by far the most complicated part. And that's how you deal with routes inside of your parallel routing. Let's say, for example, I want to be able to go to slash dashboard slash settings. And I wanna be able to configure settings for each of these different sections, my dashboard, my users, and my articles. Well, this is really easy to do. First of all, I'm gonna remove all this login related stuff just so we have a little bit less complexity. So all of that login code has been completely removed. We're just back to what we normally had before. And again, I'm just going to restart my server just in case I have any problems going on inside of it. So we're just gonna restart our server and give that a quick refresh. You can see everything is working just like it was before. Now, what I wanna do is I want to add in that new settings route. So I'm gonna create a folder, call it settings. And inside of here, I'm just gonna create a page.tsx and I'm going to just export a function from here. Let's just copy all of this code. I wanna make this incredibly simple, no waiting or anything like that. This is just going to say dashboard settings. There we go. And this is the dashboard settings page. So now if I go to slash dashboard slash settings, immediately we're gonna get a 404 error. And the reason for that is because what happens when you have parallel routes is it's not only going to try to render your normal route in that settings folder, but also is trying to render out my at users parallel route and my at articles parallel route. So I would need to create a folder inside of both of these with a settings. So we can create a settings folder in both of these and both of these will need their own page. So inside of here, I'll create a page.tsx, paste that down, clean this up a little bit. So we have my articles settings. There we go. Articles settings. And I'm just gonna copy that. I'm gonna paste that down for the users one as well and just change this to say users. There we go. So now if I give that a refresh, that should hopefully work. And again, we might need to restart our server just because of the complexity here. Sometimes it makes you do this. And let's just give that a quick refresh. And as you can see, it looks like that worked. So now we have our dashboard settings, we have our user settings, and we have our article settings. Now in my layout in this section for some links, I'm just gonna actually add in some links. So we're gonna have a link that goes to my slash dashboard, just like that to close that off. 
dashboard. And then we're just gonna copy that link down to go to the settings as well. There we go, so now we have two links. So we can go to our dashboard page, which is going to load our dashboard. And we have our dashboard settings page. If we can go over to our settings just like this. Now you may notice that everything is not rendering properly. One thing that we may need to do is actually make all of these different functions async. So let's just come over here. We're gonna make all of these async functions to hopefully see if that actually fixes the problem that we're running into here. It might also just be a problem with Next.js not being super happy with all of this in development mode. But you can see we have our settings page and our dashboard page, and it's still not quite working as we expect. And I believe it's just a problem with Next.js in development mode. To test this, we can npm run build to build out our project, and then we can just start this. So after this, we can say npm start, and that's going to start up essentially the production version of our application to see if these problems only exist inside of development. Again, some of these more niche features in Next.js are a little bit buggy in development. So here we're on the actual production version. When I click settings, you can see that works. And when I go over to my dashboard here, it works. So everything looks like it is working in the production version, which is great. So let's just go back to development so we can actually look at this as we're working on it. So we'll run the development version. I'll just give this a quick refresh. This is loading up the development version of the page. You can see we get all of our different loading text running. We'll wait for all that to finish just to make sure all of this is working as expected. And then we'll jump over to the settings and I'll just do a refresh here to get that to actually show up. Now let's say for example, that we didn't have a settings page for every single section. Cause when we have a settings page for every section, it obviously works fine. But let's say our articles don't have a settings page. So inside of here, we're just gonna delete this settings page entirely. Now immediately when we do that and we refresh, we're going to get a 404 error because this page essentially does not exist. I also looks like I need to restart my server. So I'm just gonna restart that development server. And then we'll do that again. We'll just refresh this section over here. And you can see that we're getting a 404 page immediately. And that's because there is no settings section for this article. What you can do instead is you can create a default.tsx file. This is going to run essentially any time that it cannot find a file for that route. So in our case, there is no page for our settings route. So it's gonna ren render whatever is in here. So we're gonna say export default function. And this is gonna be called articles default page. And this is just gonna return in H2 that says articles default. There we go. And we'll make that async just in case that helps with the actual development server. So if we just give this a quick refresh here, you can now see down here, it says articles default because it's rendering whatever that default page is. So essentially, if I go to that settings page, do a hard refresh. So I'm coming to the settings page fresh, nowhere else, just directly to this link. You can see it renders that default version. This does work slightly differently though, when you actually come to this page from another page. So for example, if I came from my dashboard page to my settings page, it would work differently. So let's bump ourselves into production to test that. So we'll say NPM run build, and then we'll actually start up the production version because that allows us to work. We'll go over to the dashboard section. So we'll come over here to our dashboard, just like that. And once our page actually starts up in just a second, you can see we can refresh this and you can see it says dashboard users articles. And now when we move to the settings page, you can see we get the dashboard settings and the user settings, but our article stays exactly the same. So if you're moving from one parallel routing route to another parallel routing route, and the new route you're going to doesn't have a page for a specific section, such as our articles, what it'll do is it'll render out the old page that was already there. So it's just rendering this normal page right here until we go to a route that it has a page for. The only time that the default is shown is if you go to this page directly and not navigating through next. So for example, I just refresh my page. You can now see it's rendering out that default version instead. And that's because I'm navigating directly to this page instead of using the linking inside of next. Now, if you don't like this behavior where it's actually showing you not the default version. So like when I go from dashboard to settings, you can see it doesn't show me that default version. If you don't like that behavior and you always want it to show a specific file when you don't have a route defined, well, what you could do is inside of our article here, we could create a catch all route. So essentially just putting the two dots before our name of our page, this is just going to be our catch all, we can call it whatever we want, it really doesn't matter. And then inside of here, we can essentially create a page that is going to look just like this default. So I'm going to paste this default in here, this is going to be our catch all page. And this will say catch all just like that. And we're just going to call this page.tsx. So now what's going to happen is essentially anytime we go to a URL that is dashboards slash anything, and it doesn't care how many levels nested that is, it's going to go into this catch all. So let's just close out of this real quick. We'll restart ourselves in development so we can actually see these new changes that we've just made. And I'm going to go to my dashboard page and we're actually getting an error. That's just because I forgot to add in a period here. There needs to be three periods for the catch all routes. Now let's actually run that in development. That was just my bad. Give that a quick refresh and you'll see it'll load our dashboard page just fine. Everything is loading perfectly fine. Now, if I go over to this settings page, 
you can see that I have both this default and this catch all in place. So you can see when I click on settings and refresh it, you'll see it's actually loading the catch all version instead. And that's because by default inside of Next.js, the catch all route is always going to take precedence over this default page. So essentially the reason you would want to use this catch all is if you want to render the default every single time, no matter what, even when you're navigating around. So we can essentially just remove this default. We don't need it. And if we just run this as a production, so we can build our site and then NPM run start, we can see exactly how this works for navigating between different pages as well, because unlike in the default version where it renders the old version, when you navigate to a page that it doesn't exist for, this one is going to render the same page no matter what. So here you can see we have dashboard. It says dashboard uses articles. When I click on settings, you can see immediately we get that catch all route. And if we hard navigate to this page, we also get the catch all route. So that's kind of the difference between default versus a catch all route. They both serve very similar purposes, but they work a little bit different in practice. Now, if you enjoyed this video, you're definitely going to love my complete Next.js course. I'm gonna have it linked down in the description below. Like I said, it's part of my React.js course. So it's not only gonna help you master React, everything that you need to know, testing and so on, but it's also gonna make sure you master Next.js, both the app router and the pages router because they are both covered in the course. So if you wanna take your Next.js skills to the next level, I highly recommend checking out that course. It'll be linked down in the description below and it is the react simplified premium package with that said thank you very much for watching and have a good day